Hello students, welcome to my channel D-Biology. In this video, we'll be discussing about the Chordata mappers, that is the higher animals. We have already discussed about the lower animals, that is non-chordate, and the basis of classification of animal kingdom in my previous videos, that is part 1 and part 2 of animal kingdom. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. I'll be providing the link in my description box. So guys, the chordata members. What are, uh, animals are actually included in the chordata? So the word itself tells what members are placed here. Chordata is formed by the Greek words that is corda and eta. Corda means the solid string, whereas eta means to have. So all those individuals which have that solid string are included here in the chordata. Now, what is that solid string actually? The so solid string is actually the notochord we are talking about. Here in the chordate members, it's not necessary that the notochord will be present throughout the life. This notochord and the other chordate characters can be present throughout the life or they can be present just at a stage of complete life cycle of an organism or of the chordate animal. Just like during the embryonic development, they have the characters. When they become adults or when they get birth, they lose these chordate characters, some of the chordate characters. Some get transformed to other features. So this is all we are going to discuss here in this video. So guys, if you see the animals on this earth, then around 90 to 95% are actually the non-chordate ones, whereas hardly 3 to 5% are actually the chordate markers. Among those chordates also, fishes are present maximum in number, whereas the amphibians are present minimum in number. So this was the introduction for you about Chordata so that you will have general idea what we are studying today in this video. Now we'll be discussing the three important characteristic features of the Chordata members which are actually sim uh, signifying the Chordate members. These parts can be present at any stage of the life cycle. As I'm again and again repeating, it's necessarily not required that it will be present throughout the life. So let's see those individual characteristic features. One characters, by one. We have the first one is notochord. Notochord is a string-like structure which is present on the dorsal surface of the animal. I'll show you where the notochord is present in the animal. So guys, this is the animal body and here is the notochord present. This is the notochord. Clear? Now. This notochord is actually present between the central nervous system and the elementary canal. So the notochord will be present between the two structures. What are they? The first one is central nervous system and the another one is elementary canal. It is mesodermal in origin. That is, it is derived from the mesodermal germ layer. This notochord is replaced by vertebral column. Mark this point important. The notochord is replaced by vertebral column in or around the spinal cord, whereas it is replaced by cranium, brain box. Cranium is what? Cranium is brain box. So notochord is replaced by cranium around the brain. So these modifications are important. If we talk about the vertebrate members, then they do not have notochord in their adult stage. They just have notochord during the embryonic stage like we human beings. When we grow, when we become adult, we don't have the notochord after the embryonic stage, means the initial embryonic stage, during further development, notochord is replaced by vertebral column and cranium. 
Now the next second we have got is the dorsal tubular nerve cord. This dorsal tubular nerve cord is present between the body wall and the notochord. So this is the dorsal tubular nerve cord we have got. In case of chordate members, this dorsal tubular nerve cord is actually a hollow structure. A hollow tubular structure is dorsal nerve cord present on the dorsal surface. So first is body wall. Below body wall what is present? This tubular nerve cord which is a hollow tube like structure. Below this tubular nerve cord what is present? This notochord is present. And below notochord what is present? The elementary canal is present. So we are starting with the dorsal part and we are moving towards the inner part. Dorsal means what? Ventral means what? Let me tell you in the simplest way you can remember. Our front is ventral, our back is dorsal. We'll be talking about this ventral dorsal laterals again and again. So it must be clear that what is ventral, what is dorsal, what is lateral. So our side parts, these sides are the lateral ones. Front is ventral, back is what? Back is dorsal. So the starting with the back, the first is body wall, then what we have? Then we have nerve cord, then we have notochord, then we have elementary canal. Means we are moving from dorsal towards the ventral. Clear? Now, these tubular nerve cords are actually ectodermal in origin. Ectodermal means they are originated, derived from the ectodermal germ layer. Now, these have further, means the chordates have the third fundamental character that is paired pharyngeal gill clefts. So you can see these structures. These all are the gill clefts present in the chordate members. These gill clefts are actually the, we can say, pores in the pharynx of the uh, pores in the trachea of the chordate members. Now these gill slits are actually present in the paired form. And these are present on the lateral surface of the pore. So what are the important characters? Notochord, dorsal tubular nerve cord and the third one is paired pharyngeal gill clips. The pharyngeal word itself tells you that it is present on the pharynx. Apart from these three fundamental characters, one more important character is present for these chordate members that is presence of this post-anal tail. So guys, in the chordate members, post-anal tail is found at any embryonic stage, means at any of this time of embryo development. It, in some of the members, it can be found throughout the life. Whereas in other chordate members, it is found at specific embryonic stage. So this is the fourth specific character of chordate members that is post-anal tail. Now we have got some differences between the chordates and non-chordate members. These differences makes important points from exam's point of view. So let's see these important points one by one. The first point which actually creates the difference in the names that is chordates and non-chordates. Why all those phyla up to hemichordata are placed in non-chordates and why the further phyla are this phyla chordate is separated from these members. So chordates have notochord present in them whereas non-chordates do not have it means notochord is absent. Coming to next character that is CNS formed by this nerve cord. The nerve cord forms the nerve system at dorsal surface of the body as I told you. So the CNS is present on the dorsal surface. It is a hollow single structure. It is important one. Hollow structure in chordates. Asked a number of times in different different exams. So next is non-chordates have ventral CNS which is actually a solid double structure. Then talking about the gill slits, the chordates do have pharynx perforated by gill slits 
whereas the gill slits are absent in case of non chordates coming to the next point that is heart now we are chordates i'll tell you how you can remember easily about the position of heart question is asked a number of times from this point and you can easily remember what i told you this is ventral right where do you have your heart you have heart right here right so this is ventral side we are chordates we have heart here so where do chordates have the heart on the ventral side and chordates and non chordates are opposite so the heart is present on the dorsal side of the non chordate very easy to remember right just imagine about your heart and that next is presence of post anal tail means tail present after the anus so it is found in the case of chordates whereas it is absent in case of non chordates so these are some important differences between the chordates and non chordates we have got next we have the general characters of the chordate mappers many of the terms you all are familiar with them we just have a few new terms which i'll be introducing you here plus there are some few which you will be studying in the upcoming chapters so the mammals are aquatic terrestrial or aerial means they can be found in water they can be found on land they can be found on found in air air means what we are talking about we are talking about the birds specifically of course there are some other mammals like mammals are also there who can fly not we bats i am talking about so bats are aerial they are mammals here i am not just giving you the information but i am giving you important points to remember guys next the mammals are usually free living type and they have bilateral symmetry with an with the three germ layers present in them three germ layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so they are triploblastic with bilateral symmetry they have metameric segmentation they are ucelomates they have complete elementary canal means starting with mouth ending to the anus they have complete elementary canal they have digestion in this elementary canal so type of digestion is extracellular type we have digestion in our elementary canal not in the cells the cells use digested food to get energy they are not digesting the food guys okay next is ventral heart i told you how to remember this point then they have closed circulation again you can remember by yourself we have closed circulation we can see your veins over here right and arteries of course they are deeply located so you can found find them easily but we have blood flow within the vessels itself blood do not flow out of the vessels so they have closed circulation hemoglobin is found in the rbcs now all the chordate members have hemoglobin in the rbc then they have two important systems hepatic portal system and renal portal system so many chordate members have the two portal systems some of the, them will not be having both the portal system hepatic portal system is related with liver and renal portal system is related with kidney we will study these portal systems in the upcoming chapters that is human physiology next is they have endoskeleton of bones and cartilage means the bones and cartilage will form the skeleton of the body not the outer parts like this uh, these nails or hair these are the exoskeleton where as the complete structure the frame of our body is the endoskeleton and it is formed by bones and cartilage the major part of endoskeleton depends from groups to different groups right then the excretory organ is kidney the members are dioecious dioecious means males and females are different mostly they have direct development means most of the members of the chordate do not have larva but there are some members which have larva and we need to learn the larvas of some of the members guys i know you have to learn so many examples but relax we just will learn the important ones which are frequently asked in different exams 
Next two terms are there which are new for you. One is poikilotherms and another one is homeotherms. So I'll simply explain these poikilotherms in a way that you can easily remember the meaning. First, we'll talk about the poikilotherms. Poikilotherms means the organisms which cannot maintain their temperature. They regulate the temperature according to the environment. They change the temperature according to the environment. These members are known as cold-blooded. Those which cannot maintain their temperature, the changing external temperatures and the members included here, three, phylos, uh, three classes we have. One is Pisces, that is a, a super class actually. Pisces, then we have is Amphibia. Then we have is Reptilia. Right? Whereas homeotherms means the members which are actually able to maintain their temperature with the change in the external conditions. And these homeotherms are actually known as the warm-blooded members. So what is the name for them? Warm-blooded. Those who can easily regulate their temperature. Clear? Now, these warm-blooded members include two classes. One is the birds, that is Aves. And another one is Mammalia. That is the mammals. Clear? So, these two terms, important questions are formed important points. These are from which a number of times the questions are asked. Next, we have the classification of chordates. So guys, we have the phylum chordata, which is classified into the further Texans, we can call these names. So the phylum chordata is actually classified into Two groups. One is protochordata. Protochordata. This is the first group where the phylum chordata is classified. And the second group we have got is eucordata. Here. So first we'll discuss about the protochordata. Then we'll talk about the eucordata also. So guys, this protochordata is also known as acrania. It is also known as acrania and it includes all the lower chordates. All the lower chordates are placed in the group protochordata, also known as acrania, whereas the group eucordata is known as craniata. Clear? Now, this protochordata is further classified into two subphylums. These are subphylum. One is eurochordata and another one is cephalochordata. We'll discuss about eurochordata and cephalochordata a bit detailed in the upcoming uh, part of this video. Whereas the eurochordata group, which is also known as craniata. They include the, uh, we can say, the higher chordate members and it is formed by just one subphylum, that is vertebrata. Clear? So we have got how many subphylums? We have got three subphylums. Classification is very simple. Phylum chordata. Two groups, protochordata, eucordata. Protochordata into two subphylums, that is eurochordata and cephalochordata. Eucordata has just one subphylum, that is vertebrata. Now, this vertebrata is further divided into two divisions. One is acnatha and another one is nathostomata. So, we have got two divisions. Acnatha means 
So the jawless members are included here in the Agnatha division, whereas the Gnathostomata are the members which have jaw present in them. Agnatha is further has a class that is Cyclostomata. So this is a class. Cyclostomata, we'll talk about the characters of Cyclostomata. And the Pisces and Tetrapoda are the super classes formed by the classification of Nathostomata. So Pisces and Tetrapoda are what? These are the super classes. Super class. Further, the Pisces super class is actually divided into two classes that is Chondrichthys and Ostrichthys. Whereas Tetrapoda consists of four classes that is Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves and Mammalia. So guys, this classification is very important. What is divisions means what are the divisions here? What are the classes here? What are the super classes here? What are the subphylum here? They form very important questions which are asked a number of times, especially with this vertebrata part, the complete classification of vertebrata. So do learn this classification. Now the next we have is the first subphylum that is Eurochordata. So guys, the members of this Eurochordata all are marine ones. Means all are marines. No exceptions here. Next, they have this shell formed of cunicin. Hence the name given to them is tunicata. So Eurochordata members are also known as tunicata. They have the endostyle which is similar to or homologous to thyroid gland. They have open circulatory system. These are lower chordates so they will have some similarities with the non chordates They have open circulatory system means blood do not flow within the vessels. It flows freely. Excretion is done by supraneural glands, pyloric glands, nephrocytes. Rotochord is found only in the tail of tadpole larva. So only in the larva tail this notochord is found. On this basis it is placed in the chordata members. Tail is lost during the metamorphosis. So when larva goes under metamorphosis to become adult, it loses the tail. But guys, here, the larva is more advanced as compared to the adults. Hence, the type of metamorphosis is retrogressive metamorphosis. A new term for you, definitely. Simple meaning, larva more advanced to the adult. We call it as retrogressive metamorphosis. Now, on what basis do we say larva is more advanced as compared to adults? Adults will have only one chordate character plus more than that adults are sessile whereas larva is free moving freely swimming type of structure the so larvas are more developed than the adults the adults will have just one chordate character and that too the gill clips will be present in the adults clear then we have some important examples. Yes, important examples are there which you need to remember. That is Doliolum, Salpa, Herdmania and Eschidia. This is actually the Eschidia, the picture you are seeing. This is an important picture for exam. This is actually of Eschidia. Here, so this is all about the first subphylum we have got that is Eurochordata. So, guys, the next subphylum we have got is Cephalochordata, and the members have closed circulatory system. They do not have any respiratory pigment, that is, hemoglobin will not be found in the cephalochordate members. They have protonephridia in the form of flame cells or solenocytes. This is one important feature of the cephalochordate members. From, uh, you can get the question from this point in the excretory system also. Next, the fundamental chordate characters are found throughout the life. Means starting with the embryonic stage 
and even in the adults they will have all the fundamental characters that is they will have gill slits they will have notochord they will have nerve cord they will have post amelgam so these are the fundamental chordate characters which are found throughout the life of the cephalochordate these are the first complete chordate animals you can see they do not have respiratory pigments but they are placed as complete chordate animals because they have chordate characters in them then we have an important example that is branchiostoma also known as amphioxus also known as lancelet so guys this is one very small sub phylum few characters you need to remember next we have is the third sub phylum that is vertebrata the largest sub phylum we have to study vertebrates so remember one point chordates includes vertebrates all chordates not vertebrates but all vertebrates are chordate this forms one important point sometimes we do get confused that vertebrates are higher or chordate is higher no vertebrates are included in the chordates right you won't forget now so notochord is completely or partially replaced by vertebral column in adult so i told you that the vertebral column will form the structure around the spinal cord whereas the cranium will be present around the brain and it will be formed by the modification of notochord it will be formed by replacement of notochord so this is one important point for vertebrates the vertebral column can be either made up of cartilage or bone it is not necessarily to be formed of bones or cartilage brain is covered by cranium cranium as i told you it is actually known as brain bone one important point Sorry. it is known as brain box the members are unisexual means males and females are different they have ventral muscular heart with chambers so guys we vertebrates right starting with the fishes you know till the mammalia that is we humans the most advanced mammals we all have ventral heart the heart is actually muscular it is made up of muscles and it has chambers now these chambers can be 2 3 or 4 we'll see in the different classes kidneys are used for excretion and osmoregulation the vertebrate members have paired appendages that is fins or limbs like we have hands and we have legs these are present in the form of pair just like that the fishes also have the fins but in the form of pairs so fins or limbs whatever is present it is in the form of pair and the two divisions are there of vertebrata that is agnatha and gnathostomata agnatha remember what i told you jaw less structures will be there jaw less vertebrates will be here whereas gnathostomata those vertebrates who have jaws present in them so this is about the general characters of the vertebrates next we have one class that is of the agnatha uh, division and that is cyclostomata so the members here are actually the jawless fishes means here the jaws will be absent in these fishes these are found as ectoparasites on the fishes so this is one important point jawless fishes and the second one is also important that is they are ectoparasites on fish they will live on fishes they will feed on fishes giving them hams they have 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits number of gill slit pairs learn in pairs never question is asked in the actual numbers questions are always asked in pairs So six to fifteen pairs of gill slits are there, and the mouth is like sucking type because they need to suck nutrition from the host. So it is sucking type, and it has circular mouth without jaws. So this is one important feature. They are devoid of scales and paired fins. Clear? 
Next, cranium and vertebral column is cartilaginous. Cartilaginous means made up of cartilage. Remember guys one thing, cartilage is soft, bone is hard. Like our ear pinna, if you move it, this is made up of cartilage, it is very soft. But you cannot move your bone like this, no, you cannot twist it. But you cannot. You can twist your ear pinna. Because ear pinna is made up of cartilage, your hand is made up of bone. So, cartilages are more soft than bones. Closed circulation is there, means blood vessels will be there. They are marine, but they migrate to fresh water for spawning. Means for this reproduction, they move to the fresh water. One important character it is, so I'm giving a star mark. After spawning, they die in few days. The cyclostomata, these jawless fishes, after giving birth, they will die in few days. Larva returns after metamorphosis. Means larva will move back to the marine water after metamorphosis. Now we have got two important examples. First one is petromycin, also known as lamprey. It is a living fossil. Another one is mixine, also known as hagfish. Now here this one important picture is there and it is of petromycin. This is the circular mouth they have which is used for sucking. And you can see they do not have paired fins present in them. These are the gill slits present. These are gill slits. Clear? So this is one petromycin we have. Important picture. Next is super class pisces. So now we will be talking about the division natal stomata, which is divided into two super classes. One is pisces and another one is tetrapoda. So guys, pisces, I'll make it easy. Why or how? I'll just simply say pisces means fishes, right? So, general characters are similar to the fishes. Few important characters which we don't have knowledge about in general, we'll be studying here. So, the first point regarding the evolution. The Pisces were the most dominant members in the Devonian period. So, the golden period of Pisces is Devonian period. Remember this name. They have streamlined body, another important character of the fishes. Streamlined body means the body shape which do not provide water, which do not provide resistance to the water flow. Because fishes need to swim in water. For swimming, they need to expend least amount of energy. So they have a body formation in such a way that they do not provide resistance to the water flow. Clear? So streamlined body to avoid resistance to the water flow. One important characteristic it is they have dermal scales on body means they will have different types of scales like the placoid scales, stenoid scales, we'll talk about them. So the scales formed by the dermal layer, the skin skin will form the scales on the body but exception is torpedo so exceptionally torpedo do not have scales on it rest the members of pisces do have scales iridocytes are the pigments which provide the color it is present in the dermis they have paired pectoral and pelvic fins Next, they have dirhinous condition. Two nostrils or nose openings are there in the fishes. Dirhinous condition. Terms are new, but not hard. Okay. Now, they do not have eyelids. Eyelids like this is eyelid. So, the fishes do not have eyelids present in them on the eyes. They have only inner ear. Means they do not have the inner ear. Inner, uh, ear pinna, sorry. Ear pinna like us. They just have inner ear. They have venous heart. Now, this is one important character which is definitely new. Venous heart means in case of fishes, they have heart of two chambers. Two chambers means one is auricle and one ventricle will be there. So guys, here the blood which comes into heart is always impure blood means it always have carbon dioxide. So it is known as venous heart. What happens here? 
the heart is there two chambered heart this two chambered heart gets means auricle will get the blood it will be sent to the ventricle now ventricle send blood to the lungs and the lungs transfer the oxygenated blood to the complete tissues and send back it to the auricle so here they have two chambers they have venous heart impure blood is present in the heart no oxygenated blood is found in the heart next is they have nucleated rbcs rbc red blood cells will have nucleus they have sinus venosus renal portal system hepatic portal system and their endoskeleton can be made up of cartilage or bones on the basis of endoskeleton we have two classes of physis that is chondrichthyes and osteichthyes next is they have ten pairs of cranial nerves this point is important number of cranial nerves so 10 pairs of renal nerves they do not have urinary bladder they are unisexual means males and females are different no larva is found they are cold blooded they can show either catadromous migration or anadromous migration again two new terms for you guys so in case of catadromous migration the migration occurs from fresh water to marine water whereas in case of anadromous the migration is from marine water to fresh water so this is about the general characters of the super class physis now we have the two classes of the super class that is chondrichthyes and osteichthyes guys so the first class we have got is chondrichthyes chondrichthyes means they will have the endoskeleton made up of cartilage definitely they are marine members they are marine fishes now i'll use the word fishes you won't get confused right so cartilaginous fishes are known as chondrichthyes they have streamlined body i told you why then cartilaginous endoskeleton hence the name they have ventral mouth so guys if this is the fish then on the ventral part the mouth will be present like so they have ventral mouth one important distinguishing feature they have persistent notochord persistent means which is continued throughout the life not only in the embryonic stage but in the adults also we can see notochord they have separate gill slits but these gill slits do not have cover so operculum is absent gill slits are without the gill cover without the operculum they have tough skin with minute placoid scales so chondrichthyes have which type of scales the simplest type of scales in the fishes that is the placoid scales placoid scales are modified to form the teeth which are actually backward directed means towards the back side they are formed they are predators with powerful jaws because they hunt the organisms they hunt other animals they need powerful jaws they do not have air bladder air bladder is actually the structure which provides buoyancy to fishes but chondrichthyes do not have air bladder so to avoid sinking they have to swim continuously they do not have air bladder so this they swim continuously so that they do not sink in water then we have two important characters to very very important examples a number of times questions are asked guys and that's a bit confusing too so the first one is electric organs electric organs are found in torpedo direct questions are asked but we do make mistakes so be careful learn it properly poison sting is found in trigon so these are the cartilaginous fishes which have electric organs they give electric shocks when we touch them poison sting they sting us with poisonous substances example trigon then in case of males they have the claspers for this fertilization claspers are found in the pelvic fins of males of some chondrichthyes they have internal fertilization so they have these claspers which are actually used for the transfer of sperm into the female body then they are 
viviparous mainly viviparous means they mostly give uh, they mostly give birth to young ones hence we use the word viviparous then we have some important examples guys important examples let's see the first one we have is scolidin scolidin is also known as dogfish then the second one we have is pristis that is also known as sawfish now you will be thinking why i have taken the common names too common names are equally important as examples next is carcharodon carcharodon is known as great white shark and the fourth one we have is trigon that is known as sengray So guys these are the two pictures we have the first one is colidin this is colidin and the second one we have is pristis so do learn these pictures names that which fish is seen here you can see this mouth is ventral right this is mouth it is ventral here now next we have is the second class of the super class pisces that is ostichthyes guys ostichthyes means what the fishes will have the endoskeleton made up of bones right so easily you can remember the endoskeleton in ostichthyes and chondrichthyes i don't think you will have troubles in learning the endoskeleton these can be marine or fresh water they have terminal mouth means you can see the mouth is present on the end the terminal part here these are the mouth present on the terminal part of the body they have four pairs of gills and these gills are covered by operculum so chondrichthyes were not having gill covers whereas the ostichthyes do have gill covers the scales here are the advanced type the better one than the we saw in the chondrichthyes that is the placoid scales here the scales can be cycloid or tenoid next is air bubble air bladder is present in the ostichthyes which helps to regulate buoyancy so they do not have to swim continuously air bladders are present so they provide buoyancy to the ostichthyes members then they usually have external fertilization and they are oviparous most of them are oviparous they have direct development means larval stages are not found now comes the turn of examples which are again very important guys first two that is exocetus and hippocampus exocetus is known as flying fish hippocampus is known as sea horse these are the marine bony fishes ostichthyes bony fishes marine bony fishes exocetus hippocampus then we have as fresh water bony fishes that is labio cutla clarias their common names are equally important guys then we have as aquarium bony fishes which we love to put in aquarium that is betta which is commonly known as fighting fish and another one is sterophyllum which is known as angel fish guys so these are few important examples for you for from exams point of view now we have the important pictures with us the first one is of hippocampus this is hippocampus i'll clear it so that you can easily see that it looks like horse yes am i right it is looking like horse so it is hippocampus known as sea horse pani wala ghoda and next this one is katla which is commonly eaten i guess yes so katla is eaten and this hippocampus is sea horse the two important pictures for exam now here we are done with this class ostichthyes now next we have the tetrapoda super class guys tetrapoda means four appendages in form of two pairs these tetrapods will have the heart either three chambered or four chambered they are most more advanced than the fishes these will means this super 
class will include four classes that is amphibia, reptilia, aves and mammalia. So we have the first class with us that is amphibia. So we, let's see the important characteristics of the amphibians. So guys, the amphibians are actually the members or the vertebrates which need water for fertilization. Amphibians need water for fertilization and they have dual life means they are found both in water and on land. They need water for fertilization, one important characteristic, hence we call bryophyta as amphibians of plant kingdom. Recall we studied this in plant kingdom, right? So they have the body divided into head and trunk. Some of the members can have tail present in them. Not all, but some will have tails present in them. They have moist skin without the scales. Moist skin actually helps in respiration, guys. But scales are absent. Eyelids are present now. They have tympanum, which represents the ear. This is one important feature of the amphibians. And the elementary canal urinary tract and reproductive tract. These three parts open into a single structure that is known as cloaca. So cloaca is opening for elementary canal, urinary bladder and reproductive tract. Then we have the gills, lungs and skin for respiration. So if they are present in water, they will respire by gills. If they are present on land, they will respire by lungs and skin. Coming to heart, they have three chambered heart. Means now two auricles and one ventricle will be there, guys. The members are cold-blooded and these have dicondylic skull. Means two condyles will be present in the skull. They have ten pairs of cranial nerves and they have renal portal system and hepatic portal system. Direct question is asked. Which class has renal portal system? Which class has hepatic portal system? They have separate sexes, means males and females are different. They have external fertilization. They are oviparous, means egg laying. They have indirect development. Members will have indirect development like the tadpole larva of frog, exolotl larva of salamander. So these are two larva names which you need to remember, guys. Next, we have some important examples of the amphibians, that is Bufo. Bufo, commonly known as toad. Then we have Rana, the most common one we can easily see, that is Rana tegrina. It is complete name of the frog, the scientific name, Rana tegrina. Then we have Hyla, that is tree frog, all look similar, guys. Then we have a salamander, that is salamander, and then we have his ichthyophis, that is limbless amphibia. It does not have limbs in it. It is just like a worm-like structure. Okay, so these are the important examples. Now we have important pictures. This first one is of salamander, whereas the second one is of rana tigrina, that is frog. Frogs you can easily find in your neighbors during the rainy seasons and they make so much noise also like turtle and all. So this is all about the first class of the superclass tetrapoda. Now we have the second class that is reptilia. Reptilia members got the name reptilia because of their creeping or crawling nature. They crawl on the surface, rangna. So they crawl or they creep on the surface. So these are creeping creatures like snakes. Snakes are there, they are included in the reptilia. Lizards are there, they are included in the reptilia. But lizards have legs, snakes do not have legs. Why? The legs of the snakes got reduced. They crawl, right? So they are actually having the golden age as Mesozoic era. The, these are the first successful terrestrial plants. Hence we call the pteridophytes as reptilia of plant kingdom. These are mostly the terrestrial members. They have dry and cornified skin. They have epidermal scales or scutes. 
no external ear opening is there tympanum simply represents the ear then they have two pairs of limbs if present like snakes do not have limbs so we will not talk about the number of limbs then they have three chambered heart but exceptionally in crocodiles they have four chambered heart crocodiles are advanced they got four chamber already these have 12 pairs of cranial nerves they have jacobson's organ one important question question never ask jacobson's organs are found in no the question asks the functions of jacobson's organ and what it is they are used as olfactory organ for smelling they are used then poikilotherms yes they are cold blooded they cast skin means skin cast is seen in case of snakes and lizards skin cast means they shed off their skin the snakes and lizards frequently shed their skin get the new skin they have internal fertilization most of them are oviparous and they have the direct development means the larval stages are not seen you will see the lizard of the size and then you will see it growing also you will not see the larva of the lizard size so they do not have the larva is present in them they just have the direct development in them so they lay eggs even though they have internal fertilizations after fertilization they lay the they lay fertilized eggs so these are few important characters about this class reptilia next we have the examples of this reptilia a big list of examples guys and you have to learn all these examples yes they are important for the exam first is kilon turtles turtles are always marine one important character testudo tortoise chameleon free lizard gergit kelots garden lizard crocodilus crocodile alligators which are commonly means which are quite similar with the crocodiles but they have long mouth in hindi we call them as gharials then we have as hemidactylus the common wall lizard which we are usually scared even i am scared of it then we have three poisonous snakes one is naja the king cobra then is bangaris which is commonly known as crate and the third one is vipera commonly known as viper so these are three poisonous snakes and we got all the important examples of this class now we have important pictures of this class and the names are important which you all need to remember so the first one you have got is of chameleon this is what this is chameleon gurgit in hindi we call it then this is crocodile in case of gharials it would have this long mouth gharials are also seen commonly uh, around the shores of the rivers and gharials are quite similar to the sorry these alligators i am talking about hindi word alligators will have this long elongated mouth similar in structure with these crocodiles then the third one we have got is kilons kilons means the turtles these are turtles very cute right then tortoise some of us have pets as tortoise as pets and the fourth one is naja the king cobra so these are few important examples which you all need to learn i know you will be a bit stressed to learn but learn it slowly slowly and keep revising it you need to give more time for revising examples than for learning them so guys the last second class we have got is avs i'm saying last second because after avs we have left with one more class so the class avs are the members which have feathers present in them now feathers are found in the members here the birds avs are what avs are birds imagine birds birds have what birds have feathers birds have wings birds have beak and some important characters too which you don't have knowledge till now but i'll be telling you what are they so the birds have feathers present one characteristic feature most of the birds can fly not all birds can fly yes not all birds can fly 
let me give you example about the penguins you all have seen penguins not in real life probably but in the movies and these pics etc penguins those creatures beautiful creatures they cannot fly even though they are the birds ostrich it cannot fly even though it is a bird then kiwi it cannot fly but it is a bird so different birds are there which cannot fly but most of the birds can fly guys next is they have beak present in them in hindi we call it as staunch beak is staunch so beak is found in the birds fore limbs and hind limbs are present fore limbs are modified into wings so wings are modifications of fore limbs and hind limbs have scales on them next time if you get a chance to see a bird closely look at its legs the hind limbs are actually the legs look at them you will see minute lines or net those minute lines are actually the scales these hind limbs are modified for swimming walking or clasping on trees means on uh, walking on the trees and all next is they have dry skin without glands glands are not present on the skin only one gland is present that is on the base of tail so birds have just one gland that is also on the base of tail they have ossified endoskeleton ossified means the endoskeleton is made up of bones now pneumatic long bones are present so long bones some are short bones small bones some are long bones long bones are hollow filled with air hence we use the word pneumatic this is one characteristic feature important feature which is found in the flight birds those birds which fly will have pneumatic bones present in them in the case of digestive system the birds have two extra parts in their digestive tract in their alimentary canal that is crop and gizzard clear crop it helps to uh we can say digest the particles the soil particles pebbles gravels it take into mouth then we have the heart so it is four chambered now the birds have four chambered heart it looks somewhat like this the same looks for mammals also so i'll not draw it again like this so these are the auricles and these are the ventricles four chambers are there in birds same as mammals and the members are homeothermous means they can regulate their internal temperature here the lungs are present for respiration but the air sacs which are attached to the lungs they only help in respiration rest of the air sacs which are present in birds do not help in respiration here next is they have separate sexes that is male and females are different they have internal fertilization and they are oviparous they lay fertilized eggs they have direct development that is no um, uh, these intermediate means the larval stages are found in the birds next we have few more important characters yes the birds are monocondylic means they have just one condyle in the brain and they have keel present in them this keel is actually the swollen part of sternum this part this is our sternum and here they have the swollen part that is keel we are not birds but i'm just telling you what is sternum you will study about sternum in detail in the skeletal system so the swollen part of sternum in birds is forming the keel the keel provides the site for the attachment of flight muscle flight muscles is important for the birds which actually fly and the flight muscles are attached to the keel next another important point that is guano guano is excretory matter of marine birds and it is a rich source of phosphorus when we will study this phosphorus cycle in 12th session ecology in our 12th portion we'll talk about the phosphorus cycle that is a sedimentary cycle and we'll talk about the guano too next is they have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 
Syrinx is present. Birds like cuckoo produces very melodious sound. Peacocks, yes, they do produce very melodious sounds. And these sounds are actually produced by the organ that is syrinx. Clear? Next, we have some important examples that is corvus, crow, columba, pigeon, citacula, parrot, struthio, ostrich, pavo, peacock, aptenodites, penguin, neophron, vulture, and the last one is archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is actually a reptile like bird, which is a connecting link between two. And guys, these are important examples. Then we have four important pictures in front of us. The first one is of Neophron. This Neophron is actually the vulture. So here, this is Neophron, that is the vulture. Then we have a Struthio. Struthio is what? Struthio is ostrich. This is Struthio or ostrich. Then we have a Citacula. So this is a parrot and this is Citacula. Parrot. And the last one we have is, everyone can say what it is. It is peacock. I don't have to mark it even. Its structure even clears it, right? Even though the color is not seen, means it is not colorful, but you can easily tell it is what? It is peacock. The scientific name or the biological name is pavo. Pavo the status, but we just need to remember pavo word. So this is about the birds or the class Aves. Next, the last class for us, yeah, we are going to complete the chordate mammals, guys. So, this is class mammalia and these mammals are actually found as cosmopolitan, means they are found in different places, variety of habitats in glaciers, plains, mountains, trees, water, land. So, they are terrestrial, aquatic or aerial. I'll tell you, terrestrial, simple example, be humans, right? Aquatic, yes, aquatic are there, dolphin. Aerial, aerial, I told you the example in this video itself, that is birds. So they have mammary glands in present in them, the one characteristic feature of the mammalia. They have two pairs of limbs, two hands and two legs. Another characteristic feature is presence of hair on skin. You have not seen hair till the birds, that is class birds, but now in the mammals you will see hair on the skin. Another characteristic feature is diaphragm. So diaphragm is a dome-shaped structure which separates our thoracic and abdominal part. Right? So this diaphragm is a characteristic feature of mammals. Here we have the external ear or pinna present. This is our inner pin, ear pinna. You might have learned till now. I have said ear pinna a number of times. Then they have middle ear also. They have internal ear also. The three bones of internal ear are present. Malleus and costates. Then different types of teeth in jaw. Different mammals have different forms of teeth. But the most standard ones we have is Thecodon. Means we are talking actually about we humans only what we have, these types of. But different mammals have different arrangements types of teeth. Thecodont means the teeth are found in the sockets. Heterodont means different types of teeth are there. Molars and scissors, canines, premolars. Different types of teeth are there. Four we are having. Diphydont means two times the teeth are formed. Once we have milk teeth, then we have the adult teeth, right? Around the age of 10 to 15, we lose our milk teeth and we get new teeth. So these are the different types of teeth and jaw. Other, it depends from mammals to mammals, different mammals. They have non-nucleated RBC, means now nucleus will be absent in the RBC, but exceptions, camel and llama. Questions are asked on these examples, so they are very important. Lama is similar to camel only. Then we have four chambered heart. Dicondylic skull means skull will have two condyles. Twelve pairs of cranial nerves. Homeotherms. Lungs for respiration. Sex is separate. Means males and females are separate. Internal fertilization. 
viviparous means these mammals give birth to young ones but exception is there that is ornithorhynchus and questions are asked on this example mammal which is oviparous ornithorhynchus also known as platypus they have direct development means no larval stages are found in the mammals life cycle next we have is the examples of mammalia so the list of mammals is quite huge common names you all are familiar with them but scientific names are equally important so let's put a glance on these examples so the first one we have is ornithorhynchus which is actually a oviparous mammal it is commonly known as platypus then we have as macropus known as kangaroo kangaroo give birth to immature baby hence it carries it in its pouch this is kangaroo and here it is a pouch present in the female kangaroo where it carries its baby premature baby every kangaroo then petropus known as flying fox camelus camel macaca monkey ratus rat canis dog phallus cat elephas elephant equus horse delphinus common dolphin balanoptera blue whale panthera tiger panthera leo lion you can also remember bat as mammal and learn these two specifically because these are aquatic so you will get confused with fishes but these are not fishes these are mammals guys clear so these are few important examples now we have four important pictures with us too so let's see what these pictures are the first one is of platypus ornithorhynchus this is what this is platypus then we have is kangaroo as i have already shown you then we have is bat so the name of bat is not there in ncert but they have given the picture of bat or sorry it is flying fox also known as petropus next is this one that is the balanoptera also known as blue whale so flying fox balanoptera that is blue whale petropus it looks like bat or it is bat clear students so here we are done with the mammals now we are left with one important part of this chapter that is a table is there so this table contains all the important characters and it will help you to learn the characters easily the specific characters the differentiating characters easily clear guys so please learn the table where you will be able to learn that what thing is present in which form it is present in different phylums so here we are done with this chapter please like this video subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet comment your views below and share with your friends